I'm Houston Singletary with Ableton. For the next few minutes, I want to show you how we can take a drum rack and incorporate a send and return internally, all inside the drum rack inside Ableton Live. So the first thing we want to do is load in a drum rack. We'll go to our browser, go to our device browser, click on instruments, go to drum racks, and we'll just drag an empty drum rack right into track one. And you can see I've got my pads, got my macros, I don't have any sounds yet, but that's okay because the first thing we want to do is load in an effect. In this case, we'll use the reverb, pretty standard across the board for basic send and return parameters. So we'll go to our audio effects folder. So we'll close up our instruments, go down to audio effects, go to reverb, and I'm going to drag that right into the pad designated as C1. This will create a chain on the pad. If I double click it, I can see that I've got my reverb device. Now, the next step is to go over to our chain view on the far left, which by default will not be highlighted. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, highlight it, and you'll see down below that my IO parameters show up. I have my auto IO send and return. So let's click on that return, and now we've got a brand new window that opens up just to the right of the drum pads. It says Drop Audio Effects Here. So we'll go to that device that we drug in earlier, the reverb, and I'll simply pull it right into that window and drop it right in. And basically what this does is it activates the returns, and it also activates the sins, although those sins won't show up on the far left until I drag that reverb device into the return window. Let's do that one more time. So I got my blank area here to drop my audio effects. And if I go over to the left, you'll see that the send parameter, send button, is not highlighted. That's not going to happen until I drag that reverb device in. And now the send's activated. Take a look up above. Across, we have our chain, volume, pan. And if I click on send, there it is, send A. So now I have a reverb, which I can click. I can show that reverb chain in the chain device view. I can also go back and click on the chain view to show the sound. In this case, I don't have one yet. So let's go ahead and grab one. We'll go back to the browser. Quick tip here, you can double click on the device browser, bring all your windows back up and close them as a default. Go to my instrument folder. I'll go to drum rack. And if I go down just a little bit, I should have separate folders here for individual sounds. In this case, I'll take the Kick 707, one of my favorite vintage drum machines. It's included in the Drum Machines Live Pack in Suite 8. And I'm going to drag that right onto Pad 1 that says Chain. And now the name says Kick 707. Click on my Activator button. Go to Send A. Bring up the attenuation of my send to my reverb. Click one more time. There we go. Let's make things a little bit simpler. Let's go back up to drum rack. Double click. You can see I've got a MIDI clip already loaded in. A couple of kicks going from left to right here. I'll fire that off. Another quick tip, if I hit shift tab while I'm in the MIDI note editor, take me right back to my device view. So now while it's playing and looping, control my send and click on the reverb device change some of the parameters if I want and we're not limited to just one send one return I can go back to my audio effects I go down and load something like a delay in this case, the ping pong delay. And as soon as I drag that into my window, I get a send B automatically. Since my send tab button is already highlighted, it's going to show up right here at the top. So if I begin to increase the send amount on send B, we should hear that delay starting to come into the mix. 
And this is how we achieve the send and return functionality all within drum rack. So we don't necessarily have to do it within session view and mix view. We can do it within the drum racks, making things very, very handy. We can also take things a step further with our individual effects on send A and send B in this example. We're not just limited to just working with a reverb. As a matter of fact, we could build some pretty intense chains of multiple effects for each send. We can do this, for example, on the reverb by just adding another effect in the reverb chain. I'll take the gate, for example, drag that in. Drop it right next to the reverb. You can see the vertical yellow line signifying that's the spot to drop it. And now we've got two effect devices in Sende's chain. Let's go ahead and mute the ping pong. Just the reverb parameter. Just that release just a little bit. We're going to increase the decay time just a bit. Just that attack. There we go. Balance that out just a little bit. And on the ping pong delay, maybe add a little phase effect. Might be kind of cool. So we'll bring the ping pong back in on send B. There we go. We've got a frequency shifter. Drag that right into send B's chain. You can see there's the vertical yellow line letting me know exactly where I need to drop it. There we go. Do some quick adjustments on the frequency shifter. Can increase that. Send of the audio signal to send B. Go back down to ping pong delay. We bring that feedback just a little bit lower. So there we go. So we got a nice little blend between send A and send B all within the drum rack.